Internationally, research organizations are deploying teams of quantum physicists to develop a next generation of technologies based on quantum mechanical effects. The CSIR and Stellenbosch University are collaborating to boost local training of experts to do fundamental research in this field. As part of this collaboration, CSIR physicist Dr. Hermann Eis has been appointed as a research chair in quantum, optical and atomic physics at the university's Faculty of Science. So quantum physics is the physics of small things. So the physics of molecules and atoms and nuclei and subatomic particles. This stands in opposition to the physics of the classical world. So the way macroscopic things behave, how planets move, how a soccer ball travels through the air. Our effort is about building local expertise in order to become internationally competitive in the field of quantum technologies. The CSIR has a long history of collaboration with the University of Stellenbosch and our complementary capabilities have focused on a variety of research areas to include health, biosciences, water research, nanosciences, ICT and defence. We are very happy to add to this long list of collaborative areas of research the new research chair in quantum, optic and atomic physics. We've been very fortunate that we've had a very long-standing relationship of, with the CSR. They offer a large number of scholarships uh, to our students here, internships, joint appointments, joint supervision. All of these things help to extend our capacity. We are at the basic research level and they are closer to market or the applied research. So we can operate with them seamlessly to get the basic research all the way into industry. Over the past three decades or so, quantum physicists have conceived of, of and studied in detail what one might call grand challenges in applications of quantum mechanics. These are challenges like the creation of a quantum computer, so a computational device that can execute certain algorithms much, much faster than traditional computers. Quantum sensing, in other words, exploiting quantum mechanical effects to make measurements with ultra-high precision of very weak electric fields, magnetic fields, gravitational fields. Quantum communication, where one exploits quantum entanglement in order to provably secure communication in such a way that if a eavesdropper would intercept your message, you would immediately know uh, about this. Trapped ions are a particularly good candidate um, for building a quantum computer, also for quantum sensing. Trapped ions are one physical system in which mechanical effects can be observed very clearly. So an ion, in our case, is an ionized atom. One individual atom that has lost an electron so that it is charged. And we can then use electrical fields in order to trap those ions. So what you are looking at in this image is essentially the light scattering off of one individual ion. They arrange themselves in a chain-like structure like this because they are charged and repel each other. Because an ion is a charged particle, one can push on it using electric fields. It turns out, however, that you cannot trap it with only static electric fields. You need to play a little trick using oscillating electric field. Analog, in terms of gravitational fields, is to think of this trapping process as creating a little saddle. If I put a ball down on the stationary saddle, it will roll down from on the side. However, if you start spinning the saddle at just the right rate, then you can see that it is trapped. In very much the same way, we use electric fields to trap charged particles. Our research is most closely related to this field of quantum sensing. In particular, we're interested in something called closed-loop quantum feedback. So what I mean with closed-loop feedback is, for example, what a car does when it's, when it's on cruise control. It has a sensor that detects how fast the car is moving, and if you go up a hill, it senses that it is slowing down and then injects some extra fuel, or when it's going down the hill, applies the brakes in order to keep the speed of the car constant. This kind of control is everywhere in modern science and in engineering. In fact, biological systems themselves are very complicated and sophisticated feedback control devices. Each of us runs multiple feedback loops at the same time. You're regulating the level of oxygen in your blood, you're keeping your head upright, and so on and so on. However, in quantum systems, things are a little bit more complicated. And the reason is that when you try to make a measurement on a quantum mechanical uh, particle, it strongly disrupts the dynamics of that particle. 
So our research is about how can we play tricks to extract information about quantum dynamics without causing these severe disruptions. And we believe that ultimately these tools that we develop can be very useful in applications such as quantum sensing. Since over the last few decades a lot of the fundamental issues have been resolved, a lot of the current investment goes into turning these ideas into practical devices. So our lab at the moment is at the stage where trapping ions is a routine exercise. The next phase is demonstrating experiments in which quantum mechanical effects come to the fore. In other words, we want to show how we can do qubit flips, bit flips of quantum bits, demonstrate entanglement between different ions. And once we reach that stage, we can start exploring quantum sensing applications and hopefully someday scale all this down into a portable quantum sensing device. Thank you.